welcome back to How This Mom Does It. And today I'm going to be sharing with you our curriculum choices for kindergarten for the 2017-2018 school year. If you're interested in seeing what we're going to be using this year, stay tuned. In front of me, I have our curriculum choices for my son, who is technically by age TK transitional kindergarten. Uh, he didn't meet the age cutoff. However, when I started putting it all together and in terms of what was appropriate for him, I realized everything was basically kindergarten. So this basically he's going to be doing kindergarten this year. And um, these are our curriculum choices for him. It isn't everything. Um, this is just the main curriculum pieces I'm going to be using um, and the math uh, manipulatives that go specifically with the math curriculum I chose. But I have other things as well, lots of games, educational toys, extra things that I add in. And I may do a separate video for that. I do have a video for um, the extra fun things I add in for language arts and math in two separate videos. And I can uh, link those above. Um, but I may do a new one because we've added some really cool, fun extra stuff this year um, that um, is pretty neat. So I probably do a separate video just to show some of the new extras that I have. But this video is going to be just the main curriculum I'm using this year for him. So I will go ahead and get started. So for handwriting, we chose Zaner Blozer um, kindergarten level. And we've used Zaner Blozer for the past two years with my daughter. She did first grade and then um, second grade. And she'll be moving on to third grade, which will be cursive this year. And I gave my son the choice. I showed him um, handwriting, out handwriting Without Tears and Zaner Blozer. And he chose Zaner Blozer. I wasn't really surprised. Um, he likes to do things that are similar to my daughter, um, just at his level. So the fact that they picked the same um, I wasn't, I wasn't really surprised. Um, also we did handwriting without tears. The first two books with my daughter, she did the pre-K and then the K, um, versions of handwriting without tears and it didn't really work for us. There were lots of tears. So, um, I found that at least my daughter really liked the pictures and the colors of the Zaner Blozer. So we chose to go with that. And then, um, also this year, this is new for us. It's the Magnetab. And I got one for um, my daughter in cursive. And then I got the lowercase version of the manuscript writing for my son. Um, that way they each have one since they're both learning something new this year. I thought that would be fun. And this was pretty cool. We haven't used it yet. And I actually just got it out of the box. Um, so I can't say whether they like it or not. But basically this is a magnetic pen. And you just, if you're going the right way, it makes you... It hits the dots and it brings these um, the little um, magnetic balls up. So, and then you just wipe it over it, and then they go away. It's kind of cool. So we'll see how see how they like it. Um, like I said, they each got one, and I'll show um, the cursive one in my daughter's curriculum video. So this is what we chose for, and, and this is what we're going to be using for phonics. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because um, it'll make this video really long. I'm just going to do a quick overview of what we're going to be using and then I'll do a separate video for um, how I teach phonics and a little more in depth into the products. But first we're going to be using the Now I'm Reading uh, phonics readers and we've actually um, used them with my daughter and we're using them already with my son and he's doing fantastic with them. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the Bob books. I do have some. Um, I definitely prefer these and in uh, my phonics video I'll do a flip through and um, show you a little bit more about those. After we're finished with the Now I Am Reading phon phonics books, we'll move on to the Christian Liberty Press phonics readers. And I have the first three, and that seems to be um, a good stopping point for us. Once we finish those, then we move on to Abeka. That's what I did with my daughter. So I plan on um, hopefully doing the same with my son. So I already have Abeka um, phonics readers ready to go for him for first grade. So this should take us through kindergarten and then we'll start Abeka in the first grade. Along with the phonics readers, I have um, several DVDs. Um, we have YouTube playlists that we use um, and I we use Starfall, Preschool Prep, those, those types of um, 
music and videos to teach blending and letter sounds and all that. But I really like the Heidi song so much so that I bought her DVDs. And we also listen to her music in the car. I have a Google Play account where you pay a flat amount of money per month and you get unlimited music. And all of her songs, her, her CDs are available on Google Play. So we listen to them in the car, we play the videos, um, and that's how I helped, uh, that's what helped learn my, my daughter learn to read. And I liked it so much, um, and I didn't use this with my daughter, but I found her workbooks, and I went ahead and purchased her um, first four beginning workbooks. Um, and they are very kind of explode the code, and I'll do a flip through in my phonics video, but they're kind of in the style of explode the code, but a little bit different. And I like that they go along with um, the DVDs and the songs. So we're going to be using that. And in addition to that, we're going to be using the Ordinary Parents Guide to Teaching Reading. I use this with my daughter and we're going to be using it again with my son. And I'll explain how I use this in my phonics video. We also are going to be using Plaid Phonics K level kindergarten. Um, my daughter's been, this will be my third the third year my daughter is using Plaid Phonics. Um, we really like this program. It works well for us and he wanted something that was similar to his sister so we went ahead and picked up Level K. I'm not huge on writing when they're learning to read um, but we needed some kind of workbook because we have to turn in um, work samples to our charter, homeschool charter, and um, he picked this one because it was like his sister's. And, and I thought, I, I think it's good to start in what he's going to continue with. So being as though I knew he was going to start um, the first grade book next year, um, I figured I might as well start with level K this year. So we've got that. And then we also have the kindergarten level reading skills. And my daughter did these for the first few years as well. And she really liked them. I actually had this last year and we didn't get to it. So um, I went ahead and put this in our phonics curriculum for this year. So if we have time and um, are able to get to it, then we will. And then also, and this is my monthly binder and I'll show it in a minute, but um, this is where all my um, completed work will be and anything that I have to print. And I also have for him the, um, it's the no prep packets from the Moffitt girls and you get these off of teacher pay teachers. And this has math as well as um, basically phonics for his age, but it's basically your English language arts. And um, I have these um, to go through as well with him. So it, it has the math, but also has um, just your basic writing and some, and some phonics. And these are themed per month. So this is like the back to school packet. Um, and then each month has a different theme. So I have those as well to work through. So for our reading um, curriculum for this year, we're mainly using five in a row for him. Um, we're going to be going through um, the different five in a row books that I have. I have some before five in a row that we didn't get to that we may end up adding in, as well as some from each of the different volumes. I'm not going to stick to a certain volume of five in a row. It's going to be based on um, the five in a row books that I have that fit into our monthly themes because I try and um, stick to themes with my books. So um, whatever month we're working in, if they're whatever five in a row fits is what the book will we'll be doing. And I don't follow the five in a row curriculum exactly. Um, sometimes we don't even really do hardly any activities from it. We may do some. Um, it just depends. Sometimes we'll do a lap book if he's uh, he's not as much into crafts and um, lap books and that type of thing as my daughter was. So really, I just play it by ear with him. And even if we just read the book every day in that week, then that's fine too. So um, we'll just pick and choose what we want to do out of five in a row. But I feel like as, if we're reading good books, then I'm doing my job. So um, that's what we're going to be using for him. In addition to that, we're going to be doing family read-alouds. And I have a video above that I'll link above for you if you want to check out our read aloud list for the year. And then we also do themed picture books. So I have monthly themes that I like to work through um, with both of my kids and I organize our themed picture books by those um, themes. So for instance, um, in September we do like Johnny Appleseed. Um, in, in August we do Back to School. In October um, we do like Fire Safety and um, Halloween and different things. So um, he'll be reading um, uh, a bunch of different books this year um, that we'll be going through. And I will have um, videos on our monthly themed uh, book lists. And you can check those out as well if you're interested. 
So that is what we're going to be reading this, this year. This is what we're going to be using for writing. And at this age, I don't really like to push writing. Um, I really like to focus on learning how to read and um, just the introduction into math. That's really my priority. Um, however, my daughter is going to be doing a lot more writing this year, and my son usually likes to do what my daughter does. So I went ahead and got him a primary journal too. My daughter's going to be doing some journal writing. And um, we did this with her, her kindergarten, pre-K, kindergarten, and uh, first grade year. And we didn't do it this last year. Um, and I wish I had. I really like looking back at the old journals and kind of comparing and seeing how she's grown and changed. So I thought um, this would be fun for him and more of a keepsake than really pushing him to write. So even if he just draws a picture and maybe writes a word, that's fine. Um, not really pushing him to write, but just a fun way to get him thinking about writing and being comfortable with the idea of it and doing basically kind of like what his sister does. So he's equal um, to her and... Um, having a fun keepsake to have at the end of the year. So I did pick up that. And then also we're going to be doing the monthly themed writing journals um, from first grade is Wienerful. I really love her products. You can get them on Teacher Pay Teachers, and I will put a link below for them. We're going to be using a lot of her stuff with my daughter this year in our writing curriculum. Um, so I went ahead and printed some off for him, and I don't expect him to write a lot. Um, but I wanted him to have the same as her. Again, they like to do the same. So his is basically just like one word, and I will probably write it for him unless he really wants to. Um, but it's going to be really short. Um, but getting him thinking about writing, um, that's kind of my goal for this year. Um, and just getting him started about thinking about sentences and um, putting together a story or a paragraph even if he isn't writing, he's thinking about it. So that is what we're going to be using for writing this and year. And this is what we're going to be using for math. Um, I've chosen to use Saxon Math K again. I use this with my daughter, her pre-K slash kindergarten year. She started a year early, kind of like my son is. Their, their birthdays are just at a weird time. Um, so when she was ready, we started with Saxon K. And the reason why I really like it is there's basically very little to no writing involved it it's a curriculum that takes you through using um, math manipulatives and teaching just basic math concepts with those so it's a lot of hands-on um, it does require you to purchase um, a lot of math manipulatives I, mean, I wouldn't say a lot but quite a few more than uh, I think most math programs would but um, I was able to use it a second time um, the and I can do a walkthrough on Saxon K and show it in more detail. Basically, you do a calendar meeting where you go over the calendar and then a lesson that's scripted and you can go with it scripted or just go over the concept. And at, since I've been teaching, um, since this is my second go around, I know I don't really plan on following um, the script. I'm just going to use it as a guide to make sure I hit all the concepts. So it does require you to purchase some things like um, clocks and uh, tangrams and um, linking cubes, pattern blocks, a bucket scale, uh, teddy bear counters, geo boards, dominoes, and some um, some play money. Um, and instead of their calendar book. This is something new. I did not have this with my daughter. We tried to do the calendar book with her, um, and I wasn't a huge fan of it. I found this this year, and this is new to our homeschool, and we really liked this. I believe it was, I think, around $10, and you can get them on um, Amazon. And um, basically, it's a one-piece calendar board. It's all wooden. You slide the things up and down. It's got the clock everything we had a magnetic um a, a calendar with the magnets that you could just stick things on um, we've written out calendars in the past we've used pocket charts i mean we've tried it all and this was the easiest like one piece calendar i could find that was a small space we don't have a huge house i don't have a homeschool room so i always have to be very conscious about what i'm purchasing and what i'm adding to our homeschool and this was um Big enough to where both kids could use it and see it and use it at the same time, but small enough to be able to put away. And um, it didn't have a lot of parts, which I'm all for. <laughs> so um, 
we're really enjoying this. So I, I definitely highly recommend this and I will try and put a link below if you're interested in this because I had never seen it before. This was um, something new that I found. So um, we're going to be using that for our calendar. And then in addition to that, we have um, some Heidi Songs DVDs. And I really like, as I've talked about her um, her products before, I really like the musical math. Um, it goes over a lot of different concepts uh, that are just the basics. She has great skip counting songs too um, on her CDs if you're um, working on skip counting um, or anything like that. She's got some really good skip counting CDs um, available. And then we're also going to be using, and I showed this before, but I'll show it, um, a quick glance at it, the Moffat Girls um, monthly uh, no prep packets. And uh, basically each month has different themes, and I really like working with the themes that kind of goes with um, how I do our uh, picture books and all that. Um, so this has some math in, in it as well, which is basically why I decided to go ahead and go with it instead of just sticking with everything else we had. Um, we do have to turn in some work samples into our homeschool charter, and since Saxon Math really doesn't have a lot of written pages, um, this gives me something I can turn in for math. So we're going to be using that along with Saxon. And then I also have these um, free calendar sheets, and I use these with my daughter. So I went ahead and printed it out, and when we're pretty confident and comfortable with this, then we'll move on to the calendar pages where he's starting to write out the numbers and working with tally marks and all that. And my my daughter's gone through several, several versions of this, and um, it really helped her... Uh, with skip counting and the coin cup, all that. This is really great. And this is actually a freebie. So I will, um, I don't remember who it was from, but I will link it below so you can pick this up if you'd like it um, to add to your daily math. Um, definitely, I, I really like this and um, we'll be introducing this when it's time for him. And that is what we're going to be using for math. And this is what we're going to be using for science for this year. Um, we're actually going to be doing elemental science, earth science, and astronomy for the grammar stage for both of my children. Um, my daughter is going to be doing the whole curriculum, and my son is just going to be doing the coloring pages that go along with the reading. We used elemental science last year with my daughter, and we did the life science uh, where you did the animals, plants, and the human body, and we both really liked it. It was easy. My daughter loves encyclopedias, and it's um, encyclopedia and book based uh, rather than a textbook and it has coloring pages and I went ahead and purchased the lap books too if we wanted to do them we could um, and narrations and we just it was very easy to um, fit into our schedule and we both liked it so we decided to, to continue on it's also very affordable we, we buy the um, the ebook version and we get the um, the quizzes and the teacher guide and the student workbook all for I think around thirty dollars and I do pay extra for the coloring pages and the lap books I think they're about five dollars um, a download like each PDF um, but definitely worth it um, I like having the coloring pages with it my daughter loves doing the coloring pages and um, for my son it will give us something to turn in for science so that will work out really good for us and then in addition to that, we have the Christian Liberty Nature Reader, uh, book K. That's the kindergarten level. So my son will be doing that again this year. We started last year. We didn't finish with him. So we're going to finish up that, and then he'll move on. I have books K through 3, and my daughter's going to be doing the third grade book this year. So um, we're going to continue on with those. It's a really good book. I, I really like the Christian Liberty Nature Reader. So he'll be doing that. And then we'll also uh, be doing a few of the Esborn First Encyclopedias. And these go along with Earth Science. So we have the Usborn First Encyclopedia of Space and the First Encyclopedia of Our World. Um, I was just a little worried that the books that Elemental Science wants you to use for Earth Science, I didn't think that they would be as interesting for him. Um, so I went ahead and uh, picked up these. Uh, and I only got, I spent like a dollar on each of them. I got them used. So it wasn't a huge investment, but I thought he would really enjoy the pictures and um, would probably be a little bit more at his level. So that's what we're going to be doing for science. So for history, we're going to be doing Story of the World, Volume 2, The Middle Ages. And um, I have the physical book here, but we're really going to be probably listening to it 
on um, audiobook almost entirely. I do like having the physical book though, so if we need to go back over something or reread a section, I can do that. Uh, but for the most part, we're just going to be listening to it. We usually listen to it in the car. And um, even though my son didn't really do the curriculum with us last year for history, uh, he was there with us. Uh, he was in the car listening, so he technically did listen to volume one already. Um, so we're just moving right along to volume two. Uh, the only difference this year is that he will be doing the student pages with us, um, but nothing too complicated, mainly just the coloring pages, maybe a map or two, uh, depending on what um, what he's able to do and wants to do. Um, but uh, so he'll be doing the coloring pages, and this gives us something to turn in for history uh, to our charter. So um, get lets him do an activity with my daughter and um, produces some kind of work to turn in. And then also we're going to be reading uh, several biographies um, about historical figures from the time. And he'll be listening to those right along with us. I have a video on how I'm doing Story of the World and all the resources I'm using with it. And he'll be reading all those books with us. I will link that video above for you if you'd like to check that out. Um, and it kind of goes over everything I'm going to be using. So he's going to be reading all those books and the story of the world main is our main spine. Um, but the only written work he will be doing is just the coloring pages and the maps. So that's what we're using for history. And this is what we're going to be using for geography this year. Uh, story of the world, our history cur curriculum does have some map work involved in it. Um, but it's definitely not a geography curriculum. And I really like to have a separate geography curriculum to you to use um i just it seems like geography isn't really taught in schools that much anymore and i think it's really important to understand the world around us so um, i like having a separate curriculum my daughter's going to be doing a brand new curriculum this year that i'm excited about and i'll be showing in her video uh, but to be age appropriate and level appropriate for him we are going to be using the geography song book and CD that came with her curriculum. Um, this goes along with what she's going to be doing. And he'll be in the car with us listening to the song. So um, he's just going to use that as well. Um, but then we're going to be reading through the DK First Atlas. And I really like this book. Um, it's got a lot of great illustrations and pictures. And kind of just goes through everything step by step, um, very easy to understand. So we're gonna be reading through that and we're gonna be using our scrunch map, which is really cool. It's, I wouldn't know if, I don't think it's indestructible, but it takes a lot to, to rip it. It's um, a kind of a weird material, but you can ball it up, scrunch it up, and it fits inside this little um, portable little sack. So um, we, my kids have been using this for the past year. I think we got it last school year and they really enjoy it. So we're going to be using that along with his atlas. And then we also have one of the blow up globes and we kind of just throw that around when we're looking at the different continents. We play games with it and that type of thing. So um, that's what we're going to be doing for geography this year. And this is what we're going to be using for Bible and character. We're going to be doing the Bible nuggets from A to Z. Again, we used it last year and we're going to go ahead and use it again this year and go through it one more time. And this is from Christian Liberty Press. And then we're also going to be reading through the History for Little Pilgrims. And this is their history curriculum. Um, but it starts off in creation and kind of goes through things. And um, I decided to go ahead and use that as part of our um, Bible curriculum, kind of learning um, history from the beginning. And um, we also have the beginning, uh, a couple different beginner Bibles that we read through. Um, but this is something that I'm going to assign reading from. Um, so we're going to be reading through that this year. And then we're also going to be using the Big Thoughts for Little People again. Uh, I really like this book and I thought we should go through it one more time. So we're going to be using that again for character. And this is what we're going to be using for art um, this year. We, in our history curriculum, um, we're going to be learning about great artists from the Middle Ages. And he will be hearing things from that as we read through books and listen to some CDs um, about the Renaissance. But I wanted him to have his own art curriculum that was kind of just from the beginning basics. Um, and I've had this book looking at paintings for a while. I got it used uh, for around a dollar. And I never got to use it with my daughter. We just never got around to it. And I thought that this would be good for her to read to him so they both could get um, a benefit from it. So it basically is just an introduction to art, um, how to look at paintings, size, shape, colors, some different styles. Um, 
with Mickey Mouse in it. Uh, but it's a pretty cool little book. So I, I think they'll enjoy reading through this together. Um, and she reads at about like a fourth grade level. So she can easily read this to him. And um, we could go through pictures and look at different things. So he's going to go through that this year. And then I also picked this up for both of the kids because we're going to be doing uh, the Middle Ages. And um, my son is, a re is really reluctant to color and draw it. It really isn't his thing. But I thought learning how to draw knights and castles might get him more excited to, to draw and get over his... Basically, he has a fear of not doing um, something right or it not being what he wants it to be. So I'm hoping that something that gives him step-by-step -step how to draw... Um, something and it's something that he wants to draw uh, that it might get him a little more um, enthusiastic about art so uh, that is what we're going to be using um, for our kindergarten art this year. And I just wanted to give a quick peek on how I lesson plan. I do plan on doing a more in-depth video on lesson planning and going over my spreadsheet and I actually plan on making it available to download in the future. Um, I have a TK um, or kindergarten uh, spreadsheet but I also have them for my daughter for um, first and second grade as well and going into third grade so I have um, quite a bit to share um, probably will also make one that's blank that you can add on to if you don't if you want to make your own um, but since it's in a shareable format I figure why not share um, I know spreadsheets aren't for everybody but I've tried a lot of different planners and I just never found one that worked for me and this is just what made sense to me. It makes it really easy. At the bottom, each tab is a different week. And I can just go through and print off our four weeks and take them with us um, to uh, give to our charter, uh, our homeschool charter when we have to turn in work. And um, it just helps keep me on track and focused too. I find if it, I don't have it written down, then we don't do it. So um, if I have it written down, we do it. And I like that I can highlight it off and change things around really easily since it's on the computer. And I'll usually have them really cl close to me while we're, while we're working. And I can just highlight things off as we go, which is really nice. Now, on the spreadsheet, I also have a place um, to add things like our logic and skills games. So like our mini look and um, like our perplexus ball or any different games and skills like working on colors or anything like that, I can add to that section so I don't forget to cover those things. And um, I have an area for our um, arts and crafts. So I can add in um, our themed crafts that we do because it's pretty much how I determine what crafts is I try and pick things around our theme like back to school or Halloween or Christmas. Um, we'll have crafts that go along with that and craftivities. I also have a place to add in PE. So when we do our tumbling class, things like that, and then activities is usually field trips, clubs, special events, that type of thing. And then at the bottom on just the TK, so I don't have this on my daughter's, but um, for my son, I added a monthly basic skills checklist. And I'm sorry, the camera is focusing. Um, but I discovered with my daughter there were things I would just forget to teach her. Um, you just kind of assume that, that your kids know things, and I discovered there were some things I was just, there was a gap. So I wanted to make sure that I covered basics with my son. And so I made a list of different skills that I wanted to make sure we covered in kindergarten. And I decided on a few a week and put them on um, this little checklist so I don't forget to cover those things. And then once he knows them, I'll check them off and I'll add new ones on the next week. So um, that's how I don't forget to teach things like the address and the phone number and that kind of thing. So that is um, my lesson plan. Um, for my TK and this is just the first week and like I said I will try and get a video up for um, my lesson plan spreadsheet and make it available to download as well and then I will also be getting a video up for my daughter's um, second slash third grade curriculum for this next year and then definitely a video on how I teach phonics so be looking out for those videos in the future I hope you like this video I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And if you have any requests for videos, um, definitely add those in the comments as well. And I'll try uh, to accommodate um, as many requests as I can. And until next time, I hope you like this video. If you do, click like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.